I like to highlight the 0-2 teams in the league. We have, let's see, we have the Falcons, the Raiders. We have the Bengals. The Bengals. Who would have thought that? Who would have placed money that they'd be an 0-2 team? And the Panthers. We also, we of course, have the Titans to play the Bills tonight. So the Titans will probably be an 0-2 team tonight. The, the teams without a win. Who, who? Which team of, of the teams without a win? Am I most concerned about that being, of course, again, between the Raiders, the Bengals, the Falcons, and, I mean, oh, and, of course, the Panthers, and the Titans. Now, all those teams came into the season with very different, very different bars. The Titans, the bar wasn't necessarily, the not necessarily the sky's the limit, but it was a pretty high ceiling, you know, a high bar coming into the season. As the number one seed last year. Panthers. I, I can't say the Panthers just because there were no expectations with the Panthers this season. I think Matt Rule is going to be done after this year. I think Matt Rule might actually be one of the first coaches to lose his job this year. Losing to the Browns and the Giants the first two weeks of the season. Giants 2-0 are, are the worst 2-0 team in the league. But you look at the Panthers 0-2. They, were, they didn't have expectations. So I can't say it's them. The Falcons have looked fantastic and have lost really two unfortunate games to lose because they played very well. Uh, just some breaking news here for those listening on FEU Hour Radio. Mike Evans has suspended, been suspended one game by the NFL for his fight with Marshawn Lattimore. So that's interesting. That's going to have some ramifications for, for next week for the Buccaneers with uh, Mike Evans, their number one wide receiver, being out. Chris Godwin probably still going to be out. Julio Jones has got to step up there. Uh, but the Falcons, I am not concerned at all with the Falcons. They weren't expected to win this year. They weren't. No one's saying they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. The the NFC playoff race to me was pretty s- stuck in stone. And you know that's probably changed a little bit now. I'm not sure if the Packers are going to make the playoffs. I don't, I'm not sure the, the Cardinals are going to make the playoffs. But that was never the goal for the Falcons. The goal is to build, see what they have in either Mariota or Desmond Ritter, and then go on to next year. But they've looked very good. So, I mean, for me, it's between the Bengals and the Raiders, two teams that both made the playoffs last year, two teams that played each other in the first round of the playoffs last year. And to me, the the more concerning, the, the, the most concerning team for me, for the most concerning team for me, I'm going to go with the Raiders. And a lot of people probably say the Bengals because Joe Burrow hasn't looked good. Uh, that team has struggled. But I think the Raiders are in a very are, are very quickly burying themselves in that very strong division the raiders i, I had a, I, i've projected a very big year for Derek carr i thought Derek carr would be not not just a top fantasy quarterback but i thought Derek carr had a legitimate pro bowl could have a legitimate pro bowl caliber year 252 yards two touchdowns is nothing terrible but it's kind of what raiders fans have come to see from Derek carr Derek Carr is not somebody who is going to beat you with his athleticism. He's got a very good arm, and he appears to be a good leader. But the Raiders fans have multiple times wanted to see their team move off from Derek Carr for Tom Brady, for Deshaun Watson, for other guy, for Russell Wilson when he was on the market the last two seasons. And I think the Raiders are they're, they're sniffing down the barrel of being out of this playoff race very quickly because... I don't think there's any chance in the world that they win their division. The, the Cardinals, the Cardinals, the Chiefs are way too good. Chargers are way too good. The Broncos are a mess, but I expect the Broncos to be able to figure out things. Thanks in part to their incredibly easy schedule for how good of a team they are. They have a very easy schedule up until late October, early over early November. They have a very easy schedule for the Broncos. The Bengals, I think, can come back and make something of their of their season because we saw at the end of the game they finally start to put stuff together. And week one, they really just got surprised by a very solid defense in the in the in the Steelers. And they're they're also one thing I will say about the the, the Bengals is they do have to play a first place schedule. They're not going to get the cupcake schedule they did last year, and it's very close between the two teams. But the Raiders, they can't run the ball. Josh Jacobs, nineteen carries. 69 yards, averaging only three and a half yards a carry. Devontae Adams is that dude, but that dude only had two catches for 12 yards and a touchdown yesterday. 
everyone was talking about how the combination of Derek Carr and Devontae Adams is going to be the best, best tandem in the league. Uh, but we haven't seen now. For, we when we saw it, but last last night against a mediocre Arizona Cardinals team and a bad Cardinals secondary, they couldn't find each other. So as Raiders fans, I would definitely be concerned. And then you have the most sure player on the team, Hunter Renfo, dropping the dropping the, the ball on the ground and, and that fumble, the scoop and score for a touchdown there at the end of the game. So I'd be def, I'd be very concerned. As a Raiders fan, they're my they're certainly my 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 0 and 2 team that I'd be most concerned about. But the Bengals fans, you're not far away. You're you're a very close second. The Bengals, Joe Burrow. There's just something uh, similar to the similar to the to the Broncos. There's something wrong there. Were they a fluke last year? It's incredible to say they were a fluke with how how they won. It wasn't that they were just edging games out like 17 to 16 where. The, offense played okay the defense played okay but they still managed to get a win just because the other team was struggling like nick no first game against the raiders raiders put up a fight titans put up a fight titans also kind of gift wrapped them a few possessions thanks for Myron Tannehill being buns now then they had played the chiefs in arrowhead and that is the one game where you're like okay there's there's no way i can try to say that it was a fluke or I, or anything at all because they played extremely well against the kansas city chiefs Went into Arrowhead and won. And now they're sniffing down the barrel 0-2. The reason why I'm not as concerned for them is because I don't have a lot of confidence in anybody else in their division to run away with things. The Browns were up two scores with less than two minutes to go yesterday and lost to the Jets. Jacoby Brissett ain't that guy. Uh, the, the Ravens. We saw them melt down in the second half. The, the defense, at least, melt down in the second half. And they're limited in terms of their playmakers as long as J.K. Dobbins is out. We do not know when J.K. Dobbins is going to be back. Devin Duvernay is okay. Mark Andrews is a top three, top two tight end in the league. Trout Bateman I like as a young receiver, but they're very limited with their offensive skill positions. And Lamar Jackson is really their offense. Lamar Jackson is everything to that team. We saw last year Lamar Jackson, as long as he was still in the lineup, the Ravens were a number one seed. And then once he goes down, they lose the remainder of their games and they miss the playoffs. Still had a chance to make the playoffs last game of the season with Tyler Huntley. Of course, that, that didn't happen. But Lamar Jackson is that team. If he gets hurt, the Ravens are in a very bad position. And then there's the Steelers. We saw what the Steelers are. If, if their defense can stop you, they have a chance. But the offense, they're already calling for Mitch Trubisky's head. Steelers fans, I've, I've seen a lot of it already uh, yesterday and today. Losing to the Patriots in a very, in just a very unentertaining game. So we know what the Steelers are. We know the Steelers aren't going to be serious threats uh, in that division. So the Bengals, I'm a little less concerned about just because I think they have a better opportunity to climb the ladder in their division. The wild card race, I have, I'm concerned for both. And if you look over, if you look over at the Bengals' schedule, which I'm, I'm doing right now. It's it's going to be pretty. They they have a they have a first place schedule. They do get to play the Jets next week, so that's kind of a steady the ship opportunity. And then they have the very quick turnaround playing the Miami Dolphins on Thursday Night Football. They get to play the Ravens, but in Baltimore they play the Saints, the Falcons, playing the Saints, Falcons, Browns, and Panthers. They got to walk out of there with three wins. Then they get to play the Steelers. I'm not as concerned about the Bengals, but I'm most certainly concerned about the Bengals. The other two 0 and two, uh, other 0 and two teams, Panthers, again, don't really care. They knew they weren't going to be good this year. Everybody knows they weren't going to be this good. Tennessee Titans, I'm kind of projecting, even though by the time of recording this, that game has yet to happen. They could come out and shock the world. Tannehill could come out and play really well. We've seen it happen before, and I'm, I, you know, I hope I'm, I'm hope I'm wrong because that would mean the Dolphins have a one game lead in the AFC East. And are be going going into their matchup against the Bills next week with the opportunity to go two games above them in the standings. So I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I don't think that's going to happen. I think Tennessee can still fight for a walk car spot, but they're against kind of similar to the Colts. They're so one dimensional, and you know what you're going to get. It's going to be a lot of Derrick Henry. Ryan Tannehill is not going to lead them to the promised land. Panthers, not good. I'm concerned about the only reason I'm concerned about them is because I'm just concerned how far down they're going to finish. We know they're not going to be competing for the playoffs or anything like that. 
And then, but the Falcons, the Falcons are the one Oh, and two team that I feel really good about Nehemiah. If you're watching this, I feel very good about the Falcons. They're not going to make the playoffs this year, probably, but their performances, the first two weeks in new Orleans. And then last night in Los Angeles, Mariota's looked decent. Drake London's looked like the right pick. A lot of people question whether Drake London was the, the, the right first receiver off the board there. Drake London's looked very, very good so far. Bruno Patterson's looked good. He looked good in, in the opening week. Played all right. Uh, Played all right yesterday, 41, 41 yards, only 10 carries. Drake London is looking like a, a, the real deal, eight catch, 86 yards. Is the, the Rams playing against Cooper Cup? Like, you, there's nothing you can do. 11 catches, 108 yards, and two touchdowns. A lot, I, I was wrong on Cooper Cup. As things stand, it's not that I questioned him, it's I questioned Matt Stafford. And after week one, we kind of saw, oh, he's just going to funnel it to Cooper Cup as much as human, humanly possible until his elbow falls off. But I'm not concerned about the Falcons. I'm very actually excited to see where they go as a franchise. But the Raiders, the Bengals, very concerned at them as 0-2 teams in the NFL.